Oh, boy, do we need to discuss this. Knicks owner James Dolan got into a verbal altercation with a fan before the Knicks game against the Bulls on Tuesday. Dolan told Deadspin that he was responding to the fan yelling at him to sell the team, and Dolan admitted to cursing back at the fan. In an interview with ESPN.com, the fan said Dolan wouldn't allow him to attend that game and accused him of being intoxicated, which he denied. Now, in February, after former Nick and fan favorite Charles Oakley was forcibly removed from his seats at the Garden and arrested, Dolan suggested in an interview that Oakley may have a problem with alcohol. Ryan, does this make the Oakley situation now look different? It makes it look different as in, to me, now it's worse. Right, because there was a time that some people would, would come on and they would speak about Mr. Dolan and, and Charles Oakley's situation and say, oh, well, maybe Charles was out of line. Or we started to say, maybe Charles has a problem and he should, he should get help. And the whole time, could it have been that James Dolan's just sensitive, that he doesn't want to hear anything about the way he runs the team? And tell me, when is it okay for an owner to not, to, to first of all, get into an altercation with the fan, but also verbally assault that, assault that fan, curse at that fan, and then not allow them to come into the game because a fan is heckling you? Hey, buddy, that is part of it. That's part of owning a team. That's part of running a team. That's part of playing Thanks for a team. Man. Fans get to say what they want to say. Not because I think it's okay, because I've been a player and I've been there and I've, I've heard them say, hey, if you're at home, we write your checks. On the road, I've heard them cuss you and dog cuss you, your family, your mother. It's part of the business. So for you to get belligerent enough and ignorant enough to cuss this fan and then not allow him into the game, oh, by the way, you've been putting out a piss poor product since you've taken over the team? It lets you know that Charles Oakley wasn't in the wrong, as James Dolan may have tried to say. He wasn't the belligerent, ignorant, alcoholic fool that James Dolan tried to paint him as. And for me, it makes that situation 10 times worse than I already thought it was and how disrespectful it was when it happened. It's the same for me. Uh, not, not the same as you, Ryan. It doesn't change the way I think about the Oakley situation. I blamed it on Dolan at the time. Right. And, and this just corroborates it. Look, first of all, James Dolan has a lot of nerve continually bringing up in public the idea that the other party was intoxicated when he is the, actually the antagonist physically with the other party, right? Like, like Oakley's sitting there. He's the one who sends security over, right? The, the fan is saying something to him. He's the one who approaches him and says something. Like, he's taking it to that next level. Um, and then publicly accusing them of either uh, being intoxicated or, in Oakley's case, having a problem. Now, we know that James Dolan has struggled with substance abuse in the past and wish him well with that. But maybe he's projecting. You know, it's possible that he's projecting his own issues on others. Um, here's the bottom line. He's thin-skinned. He's a thin-skinned baby. He's probably the worst owner in sports. And just imagine this. Imagine if you were a high-profile player for a team and you stunk. I mean, you had no business if you're in baseball in the major leagues or, or football, the NFL, or basketball in the NBA. Like, you're, you're in the NBA somehow, but you should, you should, you're, you're a bad D-league player. But somehow you're in the NBA for like 20 years and you stink. And in fact, your presence is dragging down the team in the most populous, biggest, populous, biggest market in the country, the most important city in the world, in the history of the known universe, in fact, New York City, and the basketball team stinks because of you. Could you expect maybe, if you were a player, some people would say, hey, so-and-so, you bum. <laughs> well, guess what, yeah. Jim Dolan? When fans and, and players and others say, hey, Jim Dolan, you bum, that comes with the territory. Right, but Your the team has stunk for two decades Max, the because other side of, of this, you. The other side of this, when, when you put it into that player perspective, if a player would have had two incidents, two incidents such as these, if a player would have been the antagonist, especially in this situation, been this type of antagonist towards a fan, could you imagine the backlash that person would receive? Not only the back backlash they would receive from the fans or, or from the organization or from the people that support that team, but that they would have to, the reprimands from the league, the way that they will be talked about in right. the media. And well, that's the way Dolan's going to be talked about. And let me just say something else about Dolan and his, and his, uh, and his uh, effect on the New York Knicks and basketball. The NBA is not as popular as it might otherwise be because the Knicks always stink. The city itself isn't as energized. There are 20 million people in that market that you're alienating. And actually, Knicks fans out of markets. A lot of New Yorkers migrate out of New York. Um, so, so, so he's really actually hurt not only the Knicks but the NBA. 
But when you think about the idea that he is as thin-skinned as he is, when his track record unequivocally makes him one of the worst owners in the history of American team sports, I'm talking about the success of the team, if in his defense he says, but we're making money and that's really my job, I'm actually successful, then what he's admit admitting is to hell with the fans. I don't care about the competitive product, or at least I'm, a, I'm terrible at that, but I'm making money. That makes him even worse. So for him to then not accept, like when you are as bad as he is, you, you must accept, the, the, the bottom line is you must accept the least you're gonna hear is that you stink in strong language from the fans and from others. That's the least you're gonna hear. And you know what you have to do if you're an owner in that situation and you're as bad as Dolan? You eat it and you like it. Well, you don't have to like it, but you don't go back at people. And he can't even pull that off. Yeah, this... He's a terrible loser. In addition to, he can't be a good winner because they never win, but he's a terrible loser. And, and, and this reinforces my feeling that he is probably the worst owner in sports. You know, both of you guys, uh, both Molly and you, Max, use the word thin-skinned. And he's extremely thin-skinned. And there are a lot of people in the world who are that way. But when you get to the point he is, when you are an owner, the part that bothers me is the double standard in the way that players are asked to behave, yet the owners aren't. I think we went through the same thing with Jim Ursay and some of the things that he was going to, and that was involving substance abuse. I know you mentioned James Dolan having some of that, some of those things or some of those demons as, uh, throughout his life. When you look at the way that the leagues treat the players, I feel like the owners should be held to a higher standard because players come and go. For the most part, owners are the guys who are there for a long time. Owners are the guys who, in the end, start to represent the brand. And if you aren't going to hold those people to a higher standard than the people they employ, to me, that is an issue. And, and him not being reprimanded the first time when it was Oakley, people kind of pushing it off on Charles, and now him having this situation. Adam Silver, who I think may be the best commissioner in sports, is going to have to step in here with a little harder reprimand or a little more consequence for James the, Dolan than he did the first point. time. That's a good point. I just want to finally say this. I want to leave it here. Dolan is not a self-made man. This is not a guy who built up the Knicks from nothing. This right. is a guy who tore down the Knicks from something. Mm -hmm. He inherited his wealth and the team and his position from his father, Chuck Dolan, yeah. who was a self-made man, who did a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, the, and the old Ann Richards line about George W. I think applies here better than any other instance I can think of. Born on third base, mm -hmm. thought he hit a triple. Yep, and that's the uh, yeah. maybe why he's so insecure and leading to the thin skin that we're talking about. We have a very special guest with us now. He's an actor, he's a dancer, he even raps. Please welcome Blackish star Miles Brown. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, thank you. We have so much to talk about. Yes. So I am a very loyal viewer of your show. I absolutely love it. And you guys are all hysterical, the whole thank cast. You. But when you're on set filming, who gets you laughing the most? Mm, probably Anthony. Probably, well, basically everybody, because they're just all really funny. Anthony, Tracy, especially Jennifer. All of them. Jennifer, yeah, basically just everybody, yeah. It sounds like such a good time. Yeah, yeah, we all feel like a real family. That's nice, but that's not your only job, my friend. You are also the official junior NBA reporter? Yes. Okay, yes. so let's talk about it. Playoffs right around the corner. What are you most looking forward to reporting on? Um, just getting to see the intensity of people's, like, just their focus, just getting to see what's on their mind, see what they do before games. Um, we're also doing this new thing where during the playoffs, I know the players like to wear exclusives like shoes mm -hmm. during playoff time, so we have this like shoe check. Yeah, you got fresh gear right uh, now. Thank you, thank you. Got my LeBron Soldier 10. Mm -hmm. Shout out to LJ. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, we just get to uh, just interview different players and have a good time. So you're going to study them, check out the whole preparation, all of that. So we showed a little clip of you earlier dancing in a LeBron jersey. Is he your favorite? Yes. Okay. He's my favorite. My but, personal favorite. And you've met him before. What was that like? Um, it, it's just, like, just mind-blowing. The first time I actually met him was in All-Star Orlando, which was, like, 2013. And I got to high-five him. He was doing, like, a little drill with, like, uh -huh. the kids. And I had a big afro. And then the most, I, no, not the most recent time, but I was at the ESPYs this year when he did the thing with Chris Paul and Carmelo, and he knew my name. And he said, I was like, what's up, Miles? And I was like, oh! You couldn't believe it. I was was more, that the moment you felt like you made it? Yes. Yes, like, you, you made it when LeBron knows your name. No question. Yeah. So are they going to repeat as champs? Yes. Yes. You sure? Yes. You're not a little nervous? No. KD's coming back Saturday? No. Yeah, no, no. You're all in. No, I'm all in. Confident, I'm back to back, back like yeah. Drake. 
Yes, back going back to back. Okay. And, yeah, it's gonna happen. LeBron, LeBron has been there many times. Mm -hmm. He has been there probably more than anybody in the whole NBA, and he knows what to do. He's got this. You gotta follow him. You gotta follow him. Now I hear you have a little message for him, for LeBron. You yes. Want to ask him about something. Yeah. Do it. Uh, you got, the stage is yours. Hey, live world, check out. I'm campa campaigning to be in the new Space Jam. That is right. I want to be in the new Space Jam. LeBron, LBJ, you heard it. Come on, please. Just I second that. Favorite. Let's make it happen. How do they say no to you, right? I, I don't know. I mean, he said maybe at the ESPYs. We'll see. He said maybe. I think it's going to happen. I'm confident about it. Thank I want to get into something else. So you're, you obviously live in L.A., yes. and I know you're a fan of Lonzo Ball. What made you such a big fan of his? Um, he's The way that he just plays, like, normally you don't really see a person who's pass first because normally when you're at that spotlight, you normally score first. Mm -hmm. And uh, just the, his intensity and the way he plays is just really mind-blowing. And uh, I think he's going to be really good in the NBA. And um, I really, like, became a fan of him ever since he actually did that one-hand alley-oop against, I don't know who it was against, but it was just, like, ridiculous. Just, it was just ridiculous. And you were hooked after that. Yeah. Now, I got a question for you because I feel like you can relate to this because you're a star in your own right, like, like him, and I met your lovely parents. Have you seen his dad? Yes, I've seen his dad. He's a, he's a little outspoken. What if that was your dad? How would you be able to handle um, that? I mean, I don't know. I, I can't. I, I don't know how to say it because I mean that's not that's not my dad. But if it was, I think I would maybe have a talk with him or yeah. something. I mean, maybe it's you the just way sit him down and have yeah, a heart to heart. Maybe it's the way Lonzo was raised. Maybe he doesn't get bothered by it, but. If it's not bothering his game, then I don't think you it You are wise beyond your years and Thank not judgmental. You. I love that. Okay, so I know you have NBA aspirations. Yes. But pretend you're in the NFL. I don't think people realize not only are you a good actor, NBA reporter, you can dance. Thank what you. would be your touchdown dance? Can I, I put you on the dance? spot? Have sure. you show up? Okay. Okay, so I don't know if I would be a wide receiver. Let's pretend you're a back, wide receiver. Wide like receiver. you're Odell Beckham Jr. Okay, right okay, this is, okay. okay, perfect. Boom. Okay, run 10 yards. Touchdown. So I go like this, I go like this. Oh, shut it down. I go, like this, I go like this, and then I do a little moonwalk, something like that, and uh, dab, like that. Next then, level. I mean, I don't want to go too much. That, that's wanna, the best I've seen. Really? Yeah, they couldn't even find you for that. Thank you. I mean, I, want, I forgot to do a little Michael Jackson moves, but that's what or, you give it a OBJ little, already did. You, could, you know, I think you'd switch it up every game. <laughs> Miles. What? You are so talented. Thank when you. did you start acting? What got you into the entertainment business? Um, well, actually, when I was a dancer, and then I normally just did dancing events, dancing yeah. things, and it kind of just transferred into acting because dancing kind of just, like, I was dancing in commercials, and then they wanted me to act a little bit more, and then it kind of just converted, even though I still dance. Um, and that's how it kind of just started, yeah. So talented, you're a star. So obviously you came in a day when Stephen A's not here yeah. and Max isn't here, so I'm sorry you didn't get a chance to debate them. So you definitely have to come back because I know yes. they're big fans of the show Thank you. And, and they want you to. But do you want any message for them? Do you want to call them out? Anything they've said before we let you go? Um, Stephen A, I'm just letting you know that the Cowboys train in my city, Oxnard, California, mm. and I am a Seahawks fan. But I am a fan of the Cowboys, so I will be ready for whatever you will tell me. I've, I've been through Anthony Anderson and Roland Martin, okay? If I've you get through them, you can handle Stephen A. And, you, and Stephen A has a lot of teams, too, yeah. so he'll be able to understand. Yeah. Miles, this was so much fun. Thank, Thank you for you. being here. I love watching you on Blackish. We can check you out Wednesday nights on ABC and come back again soon. All right. Thank you.